So today on Straight Talk, I'm with Scott Tackett, a business development advisor with Violin Management Associates, or VMA. Scott, it's good to be with you today. How are you? I'm great, Jeff. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity again. How are things going with you? Things are great. Uh, every great. every minute's taken up, just like most people. Every, the days are busy. I, I, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's a good thing. It is. So you're a business development advisor. You've been giving some good advice lately to your clients? Well, um, I, I think I better or I'm, I'm in serious trouble, but uh, I'm trying anyway. How's that? That's good. Yeah, I'd like to take a, pick your brain a little bit today on a topic that uh, anyone watching this will benefit from is diversity and inclusion. Some people call it D&I, um, but it's a phrase in business in, and it's something important to employers and employees. Maybe you could quickly tell us what it is and how, how important it is. Um, yeah, Jeff, I, I, I appreciate you, you bringing this topic because I think it's a discussion um, that we're not having enough of, and, and uh, particularly in, in our industry. I, I'd like to make a few points before we go too, too much farther. First of all, this is not an outgrowth of uh, some politically correct environment. Okay, this is the world in which we live in. Um, this is about developing competitive advantage. And I think that that competitive advantage is important because it will help our businesses in our industry sustain and continue growth. It's not some nice idea. I think it makes really good business sense for us to recognize the importance of the world in which we live in today. So I, I appreciate that. I think that there is confusion about diversity and inclusion. And, and they are two different things. And so I, I'm ho hoping that maybe I can help uh, clarify that. Diversity is the ways in which uh, people are different. And, and that, that sounds pretty simple, but it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, diversity, as, as I talk about in the employee context, is really defined as those values, beliefs, experiences, backgrounds, and preferences and behaviors that all of our employees bring to the workplace. Now, the importance of diversity in my mind is that it is a very, very positive force in helping our businesses today and all businesses um, continue their success. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by allowing each and every one of our individuals who come into our workplace to contribute at the best way that they possibly can. So that, that's kind of defining diversity. Um, Inclusion is different. And what inclusion is, it's, it's the process that we go through um, to engage these differences where we create a culture. And, and that culture inclusion is where everyone feels, no matter what their lifestyles, no matter what their backgrounds are, that they feel that they belong in this organization. And, and so as they bring these differences of diversity, they feel that they are, and I use the word safe in the workplace so that they can contribute and feel part of something. Good information. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about this. How has it evolved or changed over the years? Because right now, it's definitely a hotter topic than in the past. It really is. And I think, Jeff, I, I think that I can define that there's really been three major reasons why um, uh, diversity has evolved even over the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Um, there's really three major reasons. Number one, there are more women in the workplace. Um, I re recently read a statistic that said in 19 or 2019, 47% uh, of the workforce was female. So we have more females in the workplace. The second factor is certainly we have more minorities in the workplace. Uh, in 2000, 72% of the workforce was white and about 28% uh, included all minorities. Um, I'm seeing projections that are coming down as a result of the census in 2020 that uh, the projections are that 63% uh, of the workforce is white and 37% are minorities. So that is a very, very significant change in just a very short period of time. So um, we see that happening. And then I think the third factor is the older workforce. And this is, this is what really blew me away. In 1950, one out of seven Americans in the workplace were, were over age 55. 2010, one out of five um, were over 55 in the workplace. And by 2030, the current projections are that 
uh, one out of four people will be over 55. So there are some real significant changes that are going on. And those are the three reasons why we should be addressing this issue today and, and going forward in our companies. Well, I appreciate the data and the numbers. It's nice to, to keep up to date with that. And uh, we need experts like you to do that for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about an expert, but it's a, it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Yeah, finger on the pulse for sure. Let's talk about initiatives. So what are some diversity focused initiatives that you might recommend or ask, you know, ask your clients to look at? Yeah, and, and, and I've been on the firing line over this for, for a lot of years. So this isn't pie in the sky and this isn't something that I wanna get on a soapbox. As I said, it's not a politically correct environment, but things that I've done and the things that I encourage my client, first and foremost, hire the best and most qualified candidate, plain and simple. Uh, I think that that's critical, but I think we need to step back. And so some of the things that I suggest to clients that we're talking about these initiatives is start collecting data and information, looking at your workforce. Uh, what is the makeup of our workforce? And then set some goals. Now, I, I, I want to be very careful that people don't misinterpret that term. What I'm looking at is, as I was responsible in my, in my past work life for developing an affirmative action plan. Affirmative action plans, people get um, very, very caught up and very emotional in understanding or misunderstanding what affirmative action plans are. They're not quotas. They're to set goals. So I, I strongly urge my clients to look at your workforce and set some goals. Um, maybe we want to you know, go after or in uh, 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 going back to the idea of the most qualified is, 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 is look at where we can attract more females, more minorities into our workforce. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's, that's a goal setting and it's just like every other goal, you just monitor the information. Third thing I wanna make sure that all my clients do is that we have an internal, internal formal um, harassment and discrimination policy so that people feel that they can come to us because it's, it's not just about hiring uh, a, a candidate who is diverse and it's, it's more about once we hire them, how are we gonna keep them in our workplace? I think about um, the idea that if, if someone of a different lifestyle, a different um, culture comes into our workplace, we want them to feel safe and not just safe from an OSHA perspective, but safe in this environment that they can be themselves. And that diversity of thought is embraced. So what I look at is if they have an internal policy if we have internal policies, they know that if they feel that they've been um, unfairly treated, they can come and talk to us. One of the things that I think is important in that area is I'm recommending to a lot of my clients to really investigate an employee assistance program. It's referred to as EAP program. An EAP program is an outside service that you can get across the country and you can get experts in counseling and, and uh, assistance in every single problem that exists. And it's relatively cheap to do that. And it's a service, it's a benefit that we can provide to our employees. And they can get advice, they can get help. And it just, it just, it just helps us have another resource. I think formal training programs need to exist. And in many states, you are required to do training uh, with your hourly or non-managerial employees as well as managerial employees. So I think doing formal training. And, and I wanna clarify that this is not a sensitivity training program. And, and I've done programs like this and I'll go in and tell, tell folks, hey, I don't do sensitivity training. We're not gonna sit around a campfire, roast marshmallows and hold hands. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is an awareness program. So I think doing that on an annual basis. Let's just talk about this. How do we treat each other? How, how, do, we, how do we create an atmosphere where people do feel safe and comfortable? And, and, and it's, it's, it's just raising that awareness of the differences. So I think that that's another initiative. Certainly starts from the top. Let's make our owners and our managers accountable um, that to ensure a workplace of respect and dignity and acceptance. It doesn't mean that we lower our expectations of performance, never agree with that. But what we wanna make sure is that they are monitoring the way that we treat each other in the workplace. Um, and then I think making it part of a strategic plan 
is critical. How do we want to be able to ensure going forward? And I, I don't want to just leave it at the hiring process. Once we hire the best and qualified individual, whether regardless of their cultural background, their gender, their age, um, their lifestyle, that, that we make sure that they feel um, that this is a place that they want to come to. And then ultimately, I think another diversity initiative is to develop relationships with uh, minority organizations outside in your communities. Um, for example, there, there are many, many organizations that uh, many across the spectrum of business where there is, uh, uh, for example, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Talk to those folks. There are female um, groups all across the United States, uh, leadership groups, talk to those people, uh, develop the relationships and tell them that, hey, if you've got potential candidates, uh, please get a hold of me, uh, bring me names, bring me uh, folks that we, can, that we can hire. So I really look about seven or eight uh, really strong initiatives that, that can take place. So one, one last question. So this is really good, good stuff you've shared with us. But well, what is going to hold things back? What, what are the challenges? Yeah, that's probably the best question of all, <laughs> because it's, it, it needs to be self-reflective. And, and I think uh, biases, stereotypes, um, that this is the way that we've always done it. I, I, I will be very honest with you. When I first went into human resources in my, in my past life, um, we were second and third generation employers. So we had <laughs> grandfathers, sons, and grandsons, and we were all pretty much the same demographic. We've got to put those aside. We've got to make sure that our, our biases and our prejudices and our stereotypes are put aside. Keep in mind, what we're looking for is to hire the best and most qualified individuals that we can, regardless of their background. And, and it's the holding each other to those standards. So it's, it's really... We're our, we're our worst, worst enemy there. Well, you mentioned earlier about the owners and managers, the ones who make decisions, they're the ones that need to push this. So maybe that's the challenge as well. They need to step up. It, it, it really is. I read an article by a gentleman named uh, Roosevelt Thomas many, many years ago. And he, he really clearly identified the issues that we're talking about. And in the article, and I've, I've, I've kept this quote and, and I'd like to share it with you. He said that he was asked, what is, what is a diversity initiative? He says a diversity initiative is a comprehensive managerial process for developing an environment that works for all employees. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Well, Scott, I hope that happens, continues to evolve. And I do thank you for your time today, helping the industry to embrace these concepts that we discussed. Thank you. And I, Jeff, again, I appreciate because I think this is a great topic and, and I think it's an important topic to our future success as, a, as an industry. Thank you I'm very sure much. We'll, I'm sure we'll address this again in the future. Yes, we will. Yes, we right. will. Good. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. You too, Jeff. Mm -hmm.